Welcome back everyone to another episode of unboxing and do-it-yourself tutorial. Today I have an awesome accessory for my new car stereo. The waterproof rear view camera by East Guy and I'm going to show you how to install it. Stay tuned. Alright, let's get started. Right here is the main attraction, the rear camera plate itself. Let's go over some of its amazing features, shall we? Please bear in mind that your radio must have an RCA input for this to work or an adapter to convert to RCA. Here we have a camera with a real-time view with a resolution of 480 TV lines of 658 by 588 pixels. I know what you're thinking. This resolution may sound very low. But in reality, it really looks good for, the, for a screen this size, so it's hardly noticeable. This camera can see in a 170 degree angle to see oncoming objects from both sides. Surrounding the camera from side to side is the night vision LEDs. This will help the camera illuminate the image at night. There's not a whole lot that came with this product. Here is an RCA video cable that will allow us to view the video on the car stereo from the camera. And here we have the 12 volt cable that's about 10 feet that will power the unit. You will also need your own cable that's about 20 feet that will run to the radio so that when you place your vehicle in reverse, the camera will turn on and the radio display will auto switch to camera mode. And you will need two splitters or some way to tie three cables and another separate four cables together for your positive and negative and you will need something that will split your wires. You can buy one at Walmart for about $10-$15 or you can just use plain old scissors but they won't be as clean cut as the professional ones. Last but not least a roll of electrical tape and some amp butt splices to crimp our connections together. Here's a little card telling that the, this product comes with a 24 response time with any technical problems. A 30 day money back guarantee, a 12 month replacement warranty which is nice to have in any case, and with a lifetime support guarantee. First we need to remove the right tail light, and why the right tail light you ask? Well, it's easier to route your wires through the right side of the dashboard and have the option to easily remove the glove box and connect the wires to the radio. That being said, locate and loosen the plastic wing nuts behind the lights. Sometimes there might be a cover over the wing nuts and may be fastened with these plastic pegs. Just pop them out with a screwdriver or by hand and put them to a side. Once the plastic wing nuts are removed, you will need a tool to pry the light out. This may be difficult because there might be a silver ball joint on the right side that holds the light in the correct position but will pop out once pried. You should be able to use a flathead screwdriver while prying the tail light and please be careful and avoid the sharp edges around the light when pulling. Next we need to locate the lamp above the license plate where there will usually be an opening so we can fish our video and power to the camera. Since my license plate is mounted into the rear bumper, it was either remove the bumper or use something to pull the wires through to the tail light. The plan is to use the tail light and reverse light as a power source. The best way I found was to use a co hanger and some tape to pull the wires through to the tail light.
Once you pull the video through, take the power cable to the code wire and pull the cable in the opposite direction. Now it's time to plug both cables into the camera. Tape them so they won't come loose. And tuck them into the hole. Now you may mount the camera to the car. On my car there's only two screws, which I would prefer there are four, but they will hold. To prevent theft there are the security screws only you have the tool to remove them with. I highly suggest this. Now comes the wiring part of our installation, which may look intimidating at first, but it is quite simple really. We are only touching the reverse light wires and merging the positive and negative wires of the camera to them so that when we place a vehicle in reverse, it will power the camera and transmit a signal to our radio to auto change and then put display to reverse camera. To do this, we'll use a process called splitting wires. We'll use a three-way splitter for the negative and a four-way splitter for the positive, which will also connect the signal cable to the radio. Only cut the reverse light wires, both positive and negative, which was the white and black cable. You want to make sure that when you cut the wires, you don't cut them too close to the connector. You want to leave some length of wire just in case you make a mistake and you need to cut again. During the wiring process, you will need a stripper tool. You will need to strip all wires after you cut them. If you don't have a stripper tool, then you can use scissors. It may not be as accurate, but it will get the job done. Here is the three-way splitter for the negative, which is the black wires. Just push all three negative wires all the way in and it will stay permanently until cut. Of course, if you don't want to use splitters or you don't have the money and time, you can also just twist them together and use electrical tape, but the possibility of the wires coming undone are very likely, if not done properly. After stripping the wires, you're going to want to twist the ends so that when you push them into the splitter, it will go in easy and will lock in place the first time. To test the camera, you must find a TV that supports RCA or a converter box from RCA to HDMI. Before you start the testing process, make sure you pull the emergency brake up, then turn the accessory key to on, and then place the car in reverse. Once you're finished testing, we are now ready to run the video cable to the radio. You're going to need to remove some plastic panels along the way. Remove the tabs slowly. What tool will you need, you ask? A flathead screwdriver, of course!
Now it's time to run our 20 foot cable or more, depending on your vehicle, to the radio. Let's move on to the four-way splitter, shall we? This time we'll connect all positive wires, including the signal wire. It's time to locate the purple white wire. This wire will enable the radio to switch to camera mode when it receives a 12 volt power while your vehicle is in reverse. After locating the purple white striped wire, I chose the method of crimping. I didn't want to use solder this time because I didn't want to run the risk of dropping hot solder inside the car, burning a hole in the center console or worse. Once you have finished connecting the wire to the radio, it is now time to reconnect all connectors and install a radio. If you wish to see how I install the radio removing my console, go ahead and check out my previous video, the Pioneer AVH X4800 BS.
Looks like the East Guy's rear view camera is a complete success. I have been using this camera night and day and rain and past all expectations. If you like this video and want to see more like it, please like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.